Stuart Baggs, our guest here in the Isle of Man. I mean, are you going to be back here for long now, or is, is your world going to be crazy media and doing TV in the UK forever? Hey, make no mistake, I love the Isle of Man. I've sung its praises constantly, 24-7, whenever I'm away. Um, the Isle of Man might not love me, but, you know, I love it. So I'm going to spend as much time as I possibly can here. I mean, the downside is, is if you're doing media, it's all sort of London-centric. So, you know, I do commute every sort of week. I seem to go back and forwards, if not once, twice. But, you know, it might be cheaper to stay in London. But I love the Isle of Man, and it's the only place where you can really sort of, you know, just enjoy yourself without the fear of parking wardens coming round or, you know, just getting, you know, just the UK's high stress. What has been the reaction from most people to you? It depends where you are. I mean, the reaction in the Isle of Man to start with, as with everywhere, was pretty terrible. Um, but to be honest, that just means that I've gone on a journey. And, you know, if you start good, you know, maybe you peak too soon. So the reaction on the Isle of Man to start with was the same. People were heckling me, etc. But I felt real, and I still do. I was walking down the high street today, and, and a lady took the time to stop and congratulate me. And I'm sure that for every person that does that, there's a hundred that walk past and think, oh, God, I hate you. But, you know, they make my day, those people that say that to me. Um, and at the end of the day, all I did was try my best. Um, and can it really be that bad? to try your best, even if you don't win, you know, give it a go. Some of the media were quite harsh, the local media were quite harsh as well. The local media was very harsh. I mean, the Isle of Man newspapers, frankly, I can't wait till they go bust. They are an absolute joke. And I don't say that because, you know, yes, they absolutely hated me, but they thought they were representing the mood of the public by um, saying, you know, Stuart threw or sneaks through or luckily survived. Even though I was on the winning team, they'd say things like Stuart sneaks through. And um, it's not sneaking through. Actually, it, you know, it was three months of my life living in London in a house, competing for my life, as I thought at the time, um, you know, in front of a TV crew and Lord Sugar. Right, well, that's clear. I mean, you're certainly one that will say your mind. That gets you into trouble, though, right? Well, for sure. I mean, if somebody asks me a question, I'll give an honest answer. You said to me, what do I think of the Manx media? And I, I, I highlighted, you know, Isle of Man newspapers as being, frankly, disgusting in my mind. Um, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. I mean, some people will love it. Um, but all I, I don't claim to state fact. I claim to state my pure, unfiltered opinion, which is what it is. I believe something. I don't think anyone questions that I believe the things I say. Whether or not they're right or not is a matter for debate. Well, this is going to make you lots of money. I mean, let's be frank. You're, you're, <laughs> you're already saying you're, you're, you're a millionaire, aren't you? And all this sort of thing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I said I was the director of a company with a turnover of £3 million. Okay. Well, you, you were alluding to having lots of money. Yes. Your parents have you seen my car parked outside for? <laughs> Your parents have lots of money. They do. So you're, you're just going to... Ride this bandwagon now, are you, for a year or two, and make serious money? Well, no doubt there's, there's money to be made in the media. Um, it's not quite as lucrative as people think. I haven't had the phone ring and someone say 100 grand photo shoot now. But, you know, I've, I've done Heat magazine, I've done News of the World. Well, they're paying £10,000 a pop, if, aren't they? If not more for some of them. More. They are. I've done Live from Studio 5, I've done The Alan Titchmarsh Show, and these are all things which aren't offered de facto to every apprentice candidate. So for instance, you can just, you go on breakfast television the next morning, you get, obviously you do the, um, all the radio interviews, etc., for BBC National and local. But um, all these other opportunities are, you know, they're paid for extras. So it's, you know, it is good money, but at the same time, you still have to work for it. I mean, let's not forget that every day, I have to walk down the high street and endure abuse from certain people. And, you know, really, when you get 10 grand to do a newspaper interview, you have to offset that against the life which I've now created for myself. You've given up your private life, I presume. Then. You, you do, you sacrifice your private life. If, if there is, anyone has anything to say about you, if you, you know, it's, it's out there, people will shout what they think at you in the street. The public have, in their mind, a right to, you know, treat you as public property. Um, you don't have a private life, but you can't complain because you have to know that before you go on to the show. So, yeah, the money's good, but at the same time, it's not for everyone. And you're doing this for free to today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Blast FM. Yes. I mean, this is when you first probably came to light in the Isle of Man. Yes. You were going to set up a radio station, what, to rival uh, Manx Everyone. Radio at the time, wasn't it? Was well, it uh, well, rival Manx Radio, but... Um, you know, you, why not go and work at Manx Radio? You why? Know. I would never work at Manx Radio. Because? Well, because I'd love to cut Broadcasting House off and throw it into the sea. It's, um, it's another one of my... Manx Radio have always been negative about me, but it's what gets me, and this again is my own opinion, 
It's the fact that they get a million pounds a year of our money. It's the Isle of Man, a million pounds a year. There's only 80,000 people here. Imagine how many of those are actually taxpayers, i.e. that aren't under 16 or aren't retired. So, you know, if you take 40, 50,000 taxpayers, we're subsidising a radio station, a million pounds, and they're losing money. And it's not as if they're a national treasure because they're undercutting Energy FM, they're undercutting 3FM um, on advertising. So they're undercutting them doing pound adverts. Um, with our money as taxpayers. So that frustrates me. Would you like to take it over? I would take Bank Trade over in a heartbeat. And I would, you know, and it's not just one of those flippant statements. I would take it over and I would, I would focus it on being a public service broadcaster and stop trying to compete with, you know, with the other two stations. It, it needs to be public service. It needs more Manx content on there. It, you know, whether that be Manx language content or, you know, sort of Manx content going around the countryside, etc. But um, no, another one of my sort of pet niggles really is, is Manx Radio. So you were going to set up Blast FM as I an was. alternative? Well, it's more music based, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you turn on your radio dial on the Isle of Man and you try and find a, a music station sort of akin to Galaxy in the UK, I'll tell you what you'll find. You'll find static is what you'll find because there isn't any. You've got Energy and 3FM, which are both, you know, they're both good stations, but they are, um, they, they target, I mean, 3FM is fantastic. It targets, um, you know, especially Radio 2 and then Energy, which is probably just slightly below there. There's no, there's no niche station targeting sort of 15 to 25 year olds with a, a galaxy format of dance music and R&B music. And that's what you were planning? That's what I tried to do. And I didn't, well, there's going to be no adverts on it whatsoever. It was going to be funded out of my own pocket. It's going to be advert free broadcasting only on the weekends when people actually want to hear that type of music. Um, and it would have very low power covering Douglas and Onkin only. So what went wrong? The Communications Commission said no. Um, I think that was, there was a couple of reasons for that. Number one was obviously the three existing broadcasters objected, as you'd understand. I mean, if somebody tried to get into my business, I'd object. Well, Energy went on there pretty well, you know, quietly, didn't it, initially? Yeah, it, absolutely. And then 3 of them obviously followed. Then yeah. they, they, they pulled the And then they realised that there was actually a limited-sized pool um, and that no more were allowed. But my argument was always been, fair enough, it might be, um, you know, the role of the government to control the size of the market. Um, but is it really their role to control the content available, i.e. if there's a finite amount of advertising available, that's fine. But if I'm not taking advertisements, I'm not actually, you know, cutting into their market. All I'm doing is offering a greater choice. But apparently, you're not allowed to do that on the Isle of Man.